In this episode in How an Airstream Works, we're going to be talking about the most confusing and misunderstood part of any RV, electricity. Now, electricity isn't very confusing, but you do need to understand the difference between DC and AC. And I know some of you are thinking, eh, I don't want to deal with that, I'll just not worry about it. You need to understand the difference between your AC and your DC circuits. You need to. So pay attention to this video while I explain it to you. Right now, our trailer is not connected to anything. It's just sitting here parked. And we're going to go take a look at what works. This is our DC circuit. In here are the two batteries from the factory. They look like car batteries. There's a red positive and a black negative, the type that you hook jumper cables on. That is DC power, 12 volt DC. When you're unplugged and your Airstream's just sitting there, think of it like a car. In a car, you can turn on the interior lights. You can turn them off. You don't even need to turn the key on for some of that. You can roll the windows up and down. You can turn your headlights on. You can honk the horn. All of those things are using DC power. Now think about your car. I'll bet your car doesn't have one of these. Maybe it does if it's super fancy and super new, but think of cars in the 80s and 90s. They didn't have this. You can't just plug your laptop into your car and have your laptop charging. That's not how it works because that's a different type of power. It's no longer DC. It's now AC. So, we need to understand what in a trailer is on DC and what is on AC. So, DC stands for direct current. Think of jumper cables. It goes directly from the red cable on one to the red cable on the other. Direct current. Alternating current, AC, is like these. If you've ever been a curious kid like me and stuck a screwdriver or keys or something in there and you felt the yeah, 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 and you felt it zapping you, you actually feel an on off pulse. And what's happening is your electricity is switching from this to this to this to this to this to this so rapidly, but it's alternating, alternating current between those two. So that's where AC comes from. You can also think of it as 12 volt, like a 12 volt battery in your car, or 120 volt, which is 120, sometimes called 110. These plugs are 120 or 110. Okay, so we're not plugged into anything and stuff's working. My fantastic fan works. That's 12 volt DC. My lights work, 12 volt DC. My stereo works, 12 volt DC, just like a car. In fact, most of the trailer works. My fridge is working 12 volt DC. Oh, there's the radio. That's working in 12 volt DC. Uh, these cigarette plugs like you have in your car, those are 12 volt DC and those are running off the trailer batteries. So if I left the lights on in here for a long time, it would drain the batteries, just like in your car if you would leave the headlights on. DC drains itself. Let's see what else works. We can turn the water pump on. Pump. So the water pump works when we're not connected. So that's a DC circuit. Um, pretty much, and the heater will work. Let's turn the heater on. Uh, mode furnace. So our heater works on 12 volt DC. So what doesn't work on 12 volt DC? Why do we even need to worry about two different systems? Doesn't everything just work? No. A lot of people will buy their trailer and take it home. They'll go park it on the side of their house and they'll spend a night in it because they're excited. And they'll say, you know, I'm gonna use a TV. So they plug the TV in. Then they get ready to turn it on and nothing happens. Here's the weird thing about trailers. The cigarette plug, the lights, the 12 volt DC, all that stuff, it always works with your trailer, plugged in or not. But the 120 volt AC, your alternating current, the plugs you have in your house, none of that works unless you're plugged in. It doesn't work. 
Now the one exception is if you have a new enough Airstream to have an inverter. I'm not going to get into that too much, but some of the years, it's really frustrating, you'll see like four of these, and one of them will say inverter. And that means when the inverter's on, this plug works, but when the inverter's on, this plug doesn't work. And half of your AC plugs work with the inverter and half don't. Awful design, um, which is one big reason I like the older ones. I just convert the inverter to work on all of them. I don't want to get too in the weeds on the inverters. So here's what you need to know. Your trailer has batteries on it. The batteries will run almost all your systems, but you cannot use these unless you have an inverter, but we're pretending you don't. These don't work unplugged. Your AC will not work. Your microwave will not work. They draw too much power and the little batteries that come on an Airstream cannot handle it. A lot of people don't get that and they go to the campground or they try boondocking and they're like, what the heck, why does nothing work? None of your AC circuits will work if you're unplugged. There, that's the rule. So then we need to think about our AC circuits. Here's another way to think about it. Here's our fuse panel. Hey look, that looks just like our house with a 30, 20, 20, 20, 20 circuit breaker there. This looks just like our car where we've got these little fuses. We've all seen these fuses before. They're in your car. So all of these fuses control your DC power. So this is our DC distribution panel, and here's what it controls. It controls the bedroom lights, it controls the compartment lights, the bathroom fan, um, the locker lights, the exterior lights, the water pump, the range hood and fan, the refrigerator, the bathroom lights, ceiling fan, furnace, subwoofer, and radio. All of those things are on your DC circuit. When you go to the park and you plug into the pedestal, you get full use of everything, like you're in a house. You get the microwave. You get unlimited AC. You get the heat pump. You can plug a toaster into here and toast your toast. So if you don't understand those two circuits and what works on it and what doesn't, you're going to be real confused when you go out RVing for the first time. So none of your 120 volt stuff will work unless you are A, plugged in to the pedestal, B, running a generator, which is the same as a pedestal, and that generator must be running the entire time you are using that stuff, or C, you have an inverter. And inverters have limits. If you have a 1,000 watt inverter, you cannot run a 2,000 watt hairdryer on it. You can only run appliances that use less than 1,000 watts. And if you have two 500 watt Items going at the same time, an Instapot, well, you can't even run an Instapot. They're over 1,000 watts. But if you have two 500-watt hair dryers at the same time, you can't run anything else. So the, the rating of your inverter tells you how much stuff you can be having on at the same time. I'm sorry that this is confusing. Uh, I need you to learn the difference between DC and AC. You don't need a degree in electrical engineering, but you do need to understand, okay, my trailer lights, my water pump, my heater, all of those are going to work whether I'm plugged in or not. But to use the microwave, the AC unit, or any of these plugs, I'm either going to have to have an inverter installed, I'm going to have to be running my generator, or I'm going to have to be plugged into the pedestal. So finally, on electricity. All of these 12 volt DC systems, all these lights I have going on right now, they're draining my battery, just like a car. And if I go too long without charging my battery, they're not going to work anymore. I'm going to kill my batteries. So that's why it's important to watch your battery monitor here. Oh, let's try that again. So here it's going to read my battery state, and my battery is 7 eighths full. So that monitor is really important to watch. If your batteries are getting too low, running your heater, or running your stereo, or running your lights, or running... Uh, fantastic fans or whatever, you got to keep an eye on that because you don't have unlimited power when you're just sitting out there unplugged from the world. And when you plug into the pedestal at your camp, it'll charge your batteries up and it'll let you run all your AC circuits as well. So, that is a big reason a lot of people don't boondock in their Airstreams.
you can't use half this stuff. And even if you could, if you have an inverter, using that puts an even bigger drain on your batteries and you could easily drain your batteries in one night or less. So Airstreams and all RVs really work best if you go to a full hookup RV park where you can leave your sewer lines open all the time. You can plug in your water. You can run your electricity and just run it like a normal house. As soon as you walk away from a full hookup place, you have to start thinking about conserving water, conserving power, how full my tanks are, and just thinking about things a little bit differently. It's worth it. I hope you've learned a lot, and I hope this has been beneficial to you. If it has been beneficial, and it saved you some heartache or headache or money down the road, please consider supporting us by becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com slash the more we explore, and for $3 a month, you can make a big difference for us to help us be able to keep making these educational videos for you.